The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, my name is Beverly Bolnick, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at NMP, and I would like to welcome you to National Mortgage Professional Magazine's webinar titled Reverses Made Easy, sponsored and presented by Land Home Financial Services. I would like to thank all of our webinar attendees for taking the time out of their busy days for this very valuable and informative webinar in our ongoing series of webinars. Today's webinar will be conducted by Colleen Moore, an industry veteran with more than 20 years of experience. Colleen Moore is passionate about educating homeowners on their choices when it comes to funding options and dispelling some of the common myths about reverse mortgages. She also works tirelessly to fully educate seniors on their choices and encourages fully informed decisions for anyone considering a reverse mortgage. As National Director of the Reverse Mortgage Division of Land Home Financial Services, Ms. Moore acts as a leader and an advocate for the in the mortgage industry, appearing regularly as both a reverse and forward mortgage expert on countless television and radio programs. As a licensed real estate broker, she maintains strong investor relationships in the real estate industry and brings expert background in educating the market on the Heckham for Purchase program. She was one of the most aggressive trailblazers in promoting the Heckham as a financial and wealth management tool and educating professionals on the diversity of the product. With a diagnostic approach to lending and a focus on ethics when it comes to lending to seniors, Ms. Moore strictly adheres to the company philosophy of people first, profit second, and is dedicated to building and maintaining a reverse mortgage division focused on integrity and professionalism in the reverse mortgage marketplace. Ms. Moore holds the CRMP certification, which is a Certified Reverse Mortgage Professional certification, and it's only held by 104 people in the United States, and it's highly regarded in the industry. NIRMLA, the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association, which is the National Trade Association for the Reverse Industry, located in Washington, D.C., liaisons with FHA and HUD on the HECM program and offers the only legitimate certification in the United States. If you have questions during the webinar, please be sure to ask them in the questions area of the GoToWebinar console, and we'll try to get to as many answer, to answer as many questions as possible by the end of the webinar. Also, we will be sending out the PowerPoint presentation and a link to the recording to all webinar registrants tomorrow for your reference. Without any further ado, I would like to turn things over to Colleen Moore. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Reverses Made Easy. First, I want to put everybody's mind at ease. I'm not going to talk a lot of technicality here. Honestly, I'm here to fire you up about the most amazing product on the planet. I know that sounds crazy, but I believe it to be true. The reverse mortgage has literally revolutionized, and it is being revolutionized right now by FHA. There's so many changes on the horizon. I'm here not to give you all the uh, bits and pieces of what the product's about. I'm here to tell you how to go grow your business. Where do you go to find business? How do you create relationships? That's what I'm here to talk about. So hang on. We're about to go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> Let's get going. Just to find out what you guys know, I want to start by just giving you some very, very basics. I know you had a webinar a month ago. Hopefully a lot of you were in on that. A reverse mortgage is called a HECM, and that stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, and it's a regular mortgage secured by a deed of trust and insured by FHA. It is exclusively for the 62-year-olds. Now, at least one person, if they're a couple, must be 62 or older. It's available for all the properties you do your regular loans on, and by the time we're done here, I think you're going to recognize that this is the most flexible instrument on the market. And by understanding this instrument and using this, you're going to become a huge resource. How many people would like to become the trusted advisor to both your clients and your business partners? Let's keep going. All right, Beverly, let's give them a test. All right, we're quizzing them early here. Let's get that first poll question up, and you can answer on your screen. Can a borrower marry a 20-year-old and allow them to stay in the home if the borrower passes away before the spouse? That's with a reverse mortgage. You can answer yes or no on your screen. I'll give you some time to answer, and then I'll share the results with you. Okay. I'm going to close it up now. I'm going to share the results with you. So... 
74% of you said yes, and 26% of you said no. I'm going to ask a couple more questions just to uh, get into this. So the next question, will the heirs lose the home if it is upside down? You can answer on your screen for that one. Okay, I'm going to show the results of this now. So 90% of you said no, and 10% and 10% of you said yes. And we're going to do one more question right now. Can borrowers use a reverse mortgage for a second home? Okay, I'm going to show the results on the last one now. 71% of you said no, and 29% said yes. All right, you guys, that's a great job. Let me uh, give you the answers to this <laughs> by telling you what's new this year. First of all, any of you that said yes, you can be married to a 20-year-old, you're absolutely correct. <clears throat> you can, which is kind of crazy, and I know some of you out there, especially you guys, you're applauding some 75-year-old hooking up with a 20-year-old. I know when I'm doing this live, I always get kind of a chuckle at this point. And you cannot use this for a second home. And the majority of you answered the one about the um, heirs correctly. They do not lose the home. So let's talk now about what's happened this year. In lending for all of us, we have gone through such crazy changes since the meltdown in 2007. CFPB, I think we all have kind of a, um, a thing on our wall where we can shoot darts at CFPB. <laughs> they have made our lives crazy, right? Well, in the last two years, for years and years and years, nothing happened but the Heckam product. And then the last two years, we've had crazy changes. And in the last one year, we have had more changes than we have ever had in this product. So much so, and this is a big deal, FHA actually allows us to call this the new reverse mortgage. So let's look at what the changes are. The first thing to reinforce protection for the heirs. For the majority, majority of you, you got that answer correctly. What will happen if your home is normal and there's plenty of equity left when either, your, uh, when either the borrower passes away or they decide to sell? It's like any other loan. It gets paid off and the remaining part of the equity goes to the heirs or to the borrower. If, in fact, that property is upside down, let's play that scenario out. What if your parents took a reverse mortgage when they were 62 years old, they took all the money up front, and they never made one single payment, and they lived 30 years? Oh, my goodness, now they have an $800,000 loan. We go into another crash of our economy, and the properties were $300,000. What are the heirs going to do? Are they going to pay off $800,000? Absolutely not. FHA is going to pay off the $800,000. But here's the really fabulous part. FHA will allow those heirs to retain that property, and all they have to pay for is 95% of the current value. So if it's $300,000, the heirs can keep it for two eighty five, dollars And we all know there's 95% money out there all over the place. So this absolutely ensures that those families, and there are many of them, that it's it's the home. They want to keep the home. They've had it for 100 years. It's been it was their grandparents and then their parents. They no longer risk losing that home. That's a huge deal. Next, and this is a big one, the non-borrowing spouses have been protected. Many of you have, have read stories about FHA getting sued and all of that about the non-borrowing spouse, and that is actually true. That's what literally catapulted this thing into change. And it wasn't that FHA was bad and wrong. It was just very antiquated in its approach to this. So what was happening, and you'd read about it in the papers, people would get a, a reverse mortgage and they'd sign off that they had a non-borrowing spouse and everybody said, yeah, this is fine, good, great. And then five years later or ten years later, the borrower would pass away and the non-borrowing spouse was stuck with either refinancing the reverse mortgage or selling the home. And a lot of wonderful people were displaced because of this. 
all of us in the industry knew this needed to change, but AARP kind of spearheaded it and got some lawsuits out there, and so it got changed. And in no way am I being critical of FHA on this. It was an old rule, it was an old law, and it's very difficult for them to affect change. What shocked us, and I've got to tell you, shocked us, is when we got the new um, principal limit schedules. And just for those of you that don't know about reverse mortgages, think of principal limit as the uh, synonym to loan to value. So when we got the new principal limit schedules that are dictated by how old you are and what your interest rate is, we thought, okay, they're going to show a young spouse and it'll be 5% loan to value, 10% loan to value. I was shocked. For you dirty old men out there, <laughs> you can have an 18-year-old spouse and still get 35% loan to value. It was crazy. And if you're, if you're an older guy and you pass away, or an older girl, you go girls. If you're older and you pass away, that spouse gets to stay in that home for as long as they live there, provided they pay the taxes and insurance, they get to stay there and never make a mortgage payment. So these spouses that they have a youngin and they get 35% loan value, I gotta tell you, I was shocked, but I was also thrilled. Okay, the choice of initial mortgage insurance. What's one of the things that you've all heard of that has been a big, big criticism of reverse mortgages? The closing costs, right? Absolutely. Just like in the FHA world where we have UFMIP, upfront mortgage insurance premium, and monthly, in the HECM world it's called initial mortgage insurance premium, IMIP. Same thing. Call it whatever you want to. It's upfront mortgage insurance, and then there's also monthly as well. Now the beauty of it is FHA just changed this so that depending on how much money you take at closing, you can pay as little as a half a point in that upfront mortgage insurance or that initial mortgage insurance. Or if you're doing a purchase, so you're going to use it all, or we're taking out an existing mortgage and you're going to use it all, you can do that, but your mortgage insurance is going to be 2.5%. So that's a high number. But towards the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you how you as originators can make this such an affordable loan for your borrowers, you don't have to worry about that any longer. Now, for those of you in California, and I know people are there from everywhere, but for those in California, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that, that we have a new law that just went into place the first of the year, that there's a seven-day cooling off period between the time that a borrower gets counseled, and they almost get counseled, <clears throat> until the time before you can get going with their application. Seven-day cooling off period. And the rest of you in the country, you don't have to worry about it. Woohoo! You can do it right away. Now the biggie, and this is happening Monday, April 27th, financial assessment is being put into place for the HECM product. Now I can tell you if any of you have had any exposure to reverse mortgages or you know people that do reverse mortgages, this has turned this industry kind of upside down. But I'm here to tell you this is really a good thing. There is no one thing that will increase the credibility and the respect for this product any better than financial assessment. In the last year, with all the changes that have been put into place, we've probably improved 50% in the public perception and in the um, awareness of this product <clears throat> and in the professional perception. That's a big deal. You want your business partners to not think that this is a bad loan. This is a fabulous product and financial assessment single-handedly is going to revolutionize the perception of this product. It's been put into place, not to make your lives difficult as an originator, but it's been put into place to make sure that suitability is in place, that this is a loan that's actually going to help the consumer. It's going to protect the consumer sometimes from themselves, sometimes from their family. It's going to make sure that we're doing something positive for them. But unlike what we all have to deal with in the forward mortgage world, the regular conventional FHA and VA, a reverse mortgage is much more like the good old common sense underwrite. And some of you are probably too young to even remember that. <laughs> but those of us that are old dogs, we used to have common sense underwriting. And that's more what the financial assessment is going to be like. Let me give you a very, very simple view. If you look at a regular loan, conventional FHA or VA, and understand I, I am generalizing this, you are going to need $2.50 of income for every dollar of mortgage payment. <clears throat> That's a 40% front-end ratio. And sometimes you can get um, higher 
but very, very rarely. It's very, very strict these days with qualified mortgages. With a HECM mortgage, it's a dollar for dollar. Instead of two fifty for dollar, it's a dollar for dollar. Then guess what? We don't have any monthly mortgage payments in there. So you're talking about taxes, insurance, HOA dues if any, car loans, and any credit card debt that they have. Dollar for dollar. Do you know how easy that is? There is actually no DTI ratios with HACM. Now what they have done, and this is for the suitability, if you look at the asterisks at the bottom of the screen, they are making us make sure that they, we've got a residual and it follows the VA guides and that we have 14 cents a square foot to cover the utilities and other household expenses. So let's just take a, a scenario in your mind, a very simple one. What if I have a HECM borrower and they make $3,000 a month, all right? And let's say the residual is five something and they've got a 2,000 square foot house, so that's like $280. So they've got $800 that they have to cover with that 3,000. So if you take 800 off the top, you have $2,200 that they can have in payments. They can have a car payment, their taxes, their HOA. They can have anything in the world, $2,200. Well, if you had a regular mortgage borrower that had $3,000 of payments you'd have to cover, guess what? If it was front end, it'd be $7,500, but back end, it's $6,000 they have to make. Your borrowers can qualify for so much more house. And again, if they have terrible credit, there's no credit score qualifying. There's all kinds of exceptions that we get to apply as common sense underwriting. They're just trying to make sure that the suitability is in place. Don't be afraid of this. We can take care of this part for you. Don't be afraid of it. Know that this is a very, very positive thing that's going to revolutionize the perception of the reverse mortgage. All right. Increase volume with minimal effort, really? <laughs> How many times do people promise you stuff like over-promise and under-deliver? Well, I am not over-promising. Why can you do this? We all know lending is tightening. The CFPB, I'm sorry, I know there's some things that they're doing well. I do know that. But there's other things. That they're so focused on originators. They're so very, very focused on lenders. And I just would, I'd love it if they lighten up a little bit. They're making our lives miserable. And look what we got coming in August. We've got new disclosures. I understand they're supposed to be better, so maybe that's a good thing. What about the new and improved regulations on the HECM? I've got to tell you, with these new regulations, this product is going to shoot to the top. The economy is recovering right now, and rates will rise. I always think it's funny. I'd love to be able to see a show of hands. How many people have had borrowers call and said, do you think rates are going to go up? If you ever answer anything but yes, you're crazy. What I can't tell you is when. When are they going to go up? Everything will go up and then everything will come down. The beauty of the HECM is it doesn't get impacted because there's no mortgage payments required. And the secondary market, I'm here to tell you, if there's any secondary people on this call, the secondary market is really loving the HECM mortgage-backed security. And so it is, it's paying very well, they love it, and our economy is not going to beat up the reverse mortgage. It's not the same. What happens, you guys, when rates go up? What happens to your refinances? Poof, gone overnight. I mean, it can happen so fast. I, I just laugh when a while ago when we went up and we were getting precariously close to 5% again. Insanity, all the refinances fell away, didn't they? My goodness, I remember when we were double digits. People have no idea. <laughs> but with the HECM, it does not matter. And please, you need to adapt to a new market. I talk to originators all over the country, and sometimes they'll say, well, I've always done it that way, or I've never done that. You've got to change with everything that the CFPB is doing and with our economy. You've got to be willing to move and change with the new market. And the HECM product is the biggest source of business for you right here, right now. Now, how can you do this? Discover the ABCs, and I'm going to go through those with you. LIBOR products are not subject to the Reg Z, which means they're not subject to the origination uh, compensation rules, none of those other things. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end, but it gives you tremendous flexibility, one, to make a good income, but also to help your client. It's huge. So we've already talked about the economy is not going to impact the HECM. Let's see who our target market is. If everybody's, if anybody's multitasking, stop multitasking and look at this screen. 
This is, if you do nothing but take away from this, you will have gotten something from this webinar. Who's your target market? Your business partners, real estate agents, that goes without saying. The SRES designation, which is a senior designation, is getting, coming into huge popularity and becoming very vogue right now because the 55 and older communities are no longer the cheap seats. They're very, very high end, and real estate agents are realizing they need to expand their marketplace. Financial advisors and CPAs, and estate, family law, and elder attorneys. I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Those of you that are out there that struggle with your volume, maybe you do one or two a month, or sometimes not even that many. I know that it's hard. If you're not naturally a hunter and a gatherer and you don't, you don't know how to go kill it and gather that market and do self-generation, or maybe you work for a lead house, maybe you work for somebody that provides you leads, well, what happens to leads when the rates go up? Guess what? They get pretty slim pickings. You need to learn how to go get business partners. And what I'm going to tell you right now is the single simplest way to do it. I don't care how shy you are. If you're standing in line at a Starbucks, I know it's hard, but turn and say, hi, I'm Bill. What's your name? Have them give me the name. Well, what do you do? And if they happen to say they're a real estate agent, an advisor, a CPA, or an attorney of any kind, including bankruptcy attorneys, you need to say, I'm Joe Blow from Land Home Financial Services. Ask one very simple question. Have you heard about the new reverse mortgage? That's all. That's all you need to write down. Have you heard about the new reverse mortgage? You ask that question, you'll get one of two answers. Yeah, I have it reverse. And your answer to that is, that sounds to me like the old reverse mortgage. The new reverse mortgage is very different. Or they'll say, no, I haven't. Most of the time they say no because you put new in there and they go, wait a minute, I didn't know there was a new reverse mortgage. It is so easy to then get an appointment and don't go there with your hands out. Don't go asking for business. Go giving information. That is huge. I've got to tell you, I'll tell you a story about one of the originators. Brand new originator. He's actually used to an appraiser. <laughs> and so he was learning this product. And he's one of those great people that if I say, go do, go jump off the bridge, he'll go jump off the bridge. Not really. But when it came to business, he would go do whatever I told him to do. And I told him to do just that. Just call and say, hey, do you know about the new reverse mortgage? So he came in and he said, hey, will you do a lunch with one of these attorneys and I? Because again, back when this happened, he was still learning the product. He didn't understand everything about the product, but he was excited about it. That's what you guys need to do. He was excited because he knew it was a good thing. So when we went to lunch and the originator got up and went to the restroom, I seized the opportunity. I couldn't help myself. I said to the attorney, I said, I'm, I'm surprised. Tell me why. Why did you agree to this meeting? Why did you agree? Why did you let him get into your office? Why did you let him break through? the gatekeeper. And the guy said, I'll never forget it. He said, that's very, very simple. He said, I get dozens of calls every single week from people that call and they have the same lead in. I would like to find out if possibly we could work together and I could be a referral source for reverse mortgages. What are you doing? You're asking for something. He said, your guy called and said, I'd like to just share some information with you about a reverse mortgage and that might really enhance you and some of your clients. Are you willing to get that information? And the guy goes, yeah, of course I am. And then he shared with him a little bit, kind of got him excited and he said, I'd like to put you in front of somebody that can answer all your questions. And there we were at lunch. And this guy has since then over the last few years been a fabulous referral source for this originator. Don't be afraid. You don't have to know everything. Just ask that question. Okay, who's your client? Baby boomers and the greatest generation. Those are your clients. A lot of us on this call are boomers and mid to high net worth borrowers, children and friends of boomers. With the way this reverse mortgage is now, the new reverse mortgage, this is no longer a loan of last resort. This is no longer for the 75-year-old widow that can't afford to get her groceries, the needs-based clients. Can we help them? Sure, of course we can help them. But that's really going to be more the minority of who we're helping. If we can help those people and change their lives, we're going to do it. 
but you are going to get so excited learning how to use this product as a fabulous tool, you're going to forget all about that. So there's a huge client base out there for you. Associations, let me talk again to you originators that are struggling with volume. If you're not part of a networking group, go become part of a networking group. They're easy to join, they're easy to find, they're not that expensive. That's your best way in. You will have an automatic relationship with people around that table of other walks. You try and find a senior network group. When you start doing research, Google senior groups, senior support, senior advocacy, it'll blow your mind how much comes up. There's advocacy groups, retirement and home care, certainly real estate conventions you should participate in, in-home caregivers, senior centers, insurance specialists for aging in place. There's so many of them. Go join. I have another originator. He's fabulous. He's part of every group, and he gets so many referrals from so many people. There's people that specialize in moving, helping seniors pack to move. <laughs> it's just literally unlimited. You just have to look. All right, let's talk about the ABC. Application, the purchase. Remember, stick your hand out. Have you heard of the new reverse mortgage? Here's what will blow you away. If you ask that question, you can get in to make a presentation to a real estate office that has an in-house lender. I can't tell you how many seminars I've given, live seminars, where the in-house lender is sitting there. You have a way, you have an entree into those offices that you never could have. If you're just competing for the regular forward business, you and everybody else is competing for the forward business. Gatekeeper will never let you buy. But when you have something they can't offer, you can get in there. And what happens when you work with a real estate agent and they learn to trust you? What happens? You'll end up getting their forward business too. What about the security with the line of credit? There's so much flexibility in this, and I'm, going, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this right now, but the line of credit, the unused line of credit will grow. I want you to hear that. The unused line of credit will grow. There's a loan side and there's a line of credit side. And let's say on the side with the loan, you have a 3% interest rate, you have the one and a quarter monthly insurance, that's four and a quarter. Guess what? Whatever's unused on the line of credit side is going to grow by 4.5% every single month. It mirror images that. That line of credit is crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. It will, give you, it will give your borrowers so much flexibility. And I had, it was funny, I had one of my clients, when the light goes on, very, very high-end net worth couple, and we were talking about the HECM, and the wife looks at the husband and she goes, it's like a savings account on steroids. <laughs> I said, yeah, it is. It's fabulous. What about estate planning? My entree into this business was through an estate planning attorney. She had used me all the time for regular mortgages, forward mortgages. And she called me and she said, I want you to do a $3 million reverse mortgage for me. And very, very foolishly, I said, what? A reverse mortgage? Well, she was an attorney. She threw down and she said, what do you know about them? And I'm ashamed to say I didn't know anything about them. So I went and did my research. I apologize profusely. Went and did my research and got fired up because I realized the flexibility. And this was back in very, very early 2000s. So this was a long time ago. And there was so much flexibility back then, but there was so much stigma around it. Nobody really understood how it worked. They were all focused on the need space. So I got excited. And with this $3 million line of credit, you understand her whole goal was to pull $3 million out of the estate and save those heirs a million and a half in taxes. Huge. Let's talk about postponing Social Security. This is probably one of the most popular ways. Let's say, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the next one, the quality of life and the early retirement. If you have someone that's 65 and they really want to retire, but they don't want to take Social Security, if you have never looked at the Social Security tables, please do so. They will get half again as much money on a monthly basis. They're scheduled to get 2000 at 65. When they're 72, it's going to be 3000 It's a huge difference. But if they don't take Social Security, they can't retire. That means they're stuck working another five or seven years till they're 70 or 72. 
Well, with a HECM, with a line of credit, they can take term payments for that five or seven years of, let's say, it's $3,000 that they're going to get ultimately of that $3,000 a month. So they can retire and still postpone Social Security. Again, it's flexibility. Financial planning. And this, I, I know I've had a historic, I've had tons of school teachers that have been my clients. And I always ask them, because I, I have a great admiration for school teachers, and I, only ask, I always ask them, what is it that you love most? And almost without fail, every single teacher will say, when the light goes on, when the light goes on. And I can tell you, when you are working with financial planners, when the light goes on, you have just hit a home run. When financial planners understand what this is, a pool of money that they're, nobody's paying any interest or mortgage insurance on, if they've got line of credit, it's just sitting there, but it's growing. They've got a pool of money they can use and pay back. It's fabulous. Financial planners have a kind of an underlying fear. I have many of them that are very good friends of people calling and asking to liquidate some of their uh, funds in a bad time, in a bear market. The market's down. Ah, she just asked me for $30,000 and I'm going to stab myself. <laughs> it's a horrible time to liquidate. Now they can tell that client, go pull it from your reverse mortgage line of credit. When the market comes back up and we've got some excess in there, we're going to take it and we're going to pay back that line of credit. So think of it as a big circle. And what that's done is probably the single biggest fear of the financial planning industry is that their client will run out of money. Run out of money. When they recognize they've got a source that they can play the market and they've got a source that they can send their people if they need long-term or they need in-home care, it is amazing. They now know that they can protect their client and not have them. We all hear stories of people that have huge amounts of money and then Boom, it's all gone. This is how your planner knows that they can make them their client not outlive their money. All right. Let's talk about every scenario I'm going to show you are my real clients that I've had historically. This first one, fabulous couple. They had been making very good money, had a very nice lifestyle. They did own their home free and clear. They aggressively paid it off while they were working. The problem is now that they were retired, their income certainly covered their bills, but it didn't pay for extended vacations and some of the things that they wanted to do. And they had this fabulous grandson that they wanted to pay for his tuition. You know, one of the things that's great about a reverse mortgage, you don't have to wait to be dead for you to actually help your family members. It that sounds really gross, but at the end of the day, it's true. Isn't it a lot more fun to do something while you're living and you get to see them enjoy it? So they were able to pull out a lump sum. They paid for their grandson's tuition. They chose with the remaining money to set it up on what we call a 10-year payment, T-E-N-U-R-E. -E. And that 10-year payment will come to them every month for the rest of their lives. Whether they have equity or not, it continues to come to them. The cool part about that, these guys, my goodness, they got season tickets. They started going on extended vacations like three, four times a year. I told them I wanted them to adopt me because now they were having fun in their retirement and that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, I haven't talked to them in the last 18, to two, 18 months to two years. If ever those monthly payments were building up and they were getting too much excess cash, all you do is pick up the phone, make a call, say, hey, cut off the tenure payments, throw it into line of credit. And then six months later, they want them back, start those tenure payments up again. This is the most flexible loan on the planet. All right, this one, this gal is great. Uh, she'd been a client of mine for like 15 years single woman in her 60s. She lived in a very, very high-end area of California. Down, I'm down in San Diego County. For any of you that don't know, that are listening from the East Coast, we have two beautiful beach areas. One is La Jolla and one is Del Mar. They're very high-end and they're gorgeous. This gal had a gorgeous two-unit on the beach in La Jolla. And, uh, well, it was a couple of blocks away from it, but she had beach view and she was certainly walking distance. This is beautiful. It's a house and a helper unit in back. Well, the problem with her, she's an MFCC, and she really didn't like to work. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. She had a champagne taste and a beer pocketbook. So what was happening, she had a million and a half loan on this house. I know. I put it there for her. When she was back years ago, I put this million and a half loan on there. And yeah, it was back in the interest only, the whole nine yards. So this gal was 
paying this loan, and every month, I've been working with her financial advisor the entire time, every single month she was hitting that account to pay for her mortgage. And usually when she'd hit it, she'd hit it for some extra because she loved to go travel and party and do all kinds of things. It was getting serious. Over the course of the years when the market just crashed, we obviously we didn't want her to sell it when it was so down. But as it started to come back up, I got a call from him and he said, you know, we need to have a meeting with her. She is down. She'd started with almost two million, somewhere between I think it was one six to two million in her portfolio when I first met her. She was down to three hundred thousand dollars, guys. Three hundred thousand dollars. And Still didn't like to work a whole lot. She had a very, very small private practice and still was sucking it every single month. So we met with her. We convinced her, you're going to crash and burn. Well, for her to sell her house, she walked away with that. It was a little more than 600000 But in La Jolla, she could buy, I think it looked a little bit like a lifeguard house <laughs> sitting out there or something. Certainly doesn't look like a house. And that's about what she could get in La Jolla. So I happen to live in a high-rise downtown San Diego, and I introduced her to that lifestyle. She fell in love. She's got kind of a Soho-style loft in a beautiful building right by the harbor. She only had to put 300000 down on that puppy, no mortgage payments. She was able to give 300 back to her financial advisor, and he was like, sweat of his brow. She doesn't have to tap it anymore. He can actually grow that for her, for her future. She's able to work enough to pay her HOA taxes and insurance and have the lifestyle that she wants. This literally, I'm not even sure, she knows it saved her life, but I don't think she ever really played out. Had she run out of that $300,000, she would have lost everything. It would have been horrible. All right. Let's test your knowledge again. All right. Beverly? Let's put this question up. So how many people turn 62 in the United States each week? We have the choices of 750, 2,500, 7,000, or 77,000. You can answer on your screen. Okay, I'm going to close it up and share the results. Okay. So 1% of you said 750,000, 2,500 uh, was the response from 9% of you, 38% of you said 7,000, and 52% of you said 77,000. All right. Those of you that 77,000, you are absolutely correct. And you probably, you guys probably are somewhat in the reverse space, <laughs> or you've been reading. Think about this. Traditional lending is getting tighter each year. You guys, that's 11,000 people per day are turning 62. For those of you, you maybe have a particular demographic or a particular area and you focus on purchase business. What would you think if 11,000 people entered the purchase market every day for you? That's what is out there. It is such an untapped market. It's crazy. And the whole world is competing for and I have no idea how many people enter the purchase market every day. Depends on where you live, or are you in a highly rural area or urban area? But there's no way you can touch this. There's no other demographic that's growing like this. These are the boomers, huge, huge population. And guess what? If you're there and you got the answer for them, you're going to explode your business. People want to retire. They're looking for options. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of clients that were my forward originating uh, clients that during this horrible crash, that both of them lost their jobs. People lost properties. All kinds of things happened. Their credit got trashed. They lost homes and short sales and foreclosures and some filed bankruptcy. All those things prevent them from going and getting a regular mortgage. Well, with a HECM, that's not the case. Today's boomers are really savvy investors. And once that little light goes on in their eye, just like my client that said it's a savings account on steroids, once that light goes on, they love the flexibility of the HECM. And financial advisors, this is fabulous, um, financial advisors now actually have the HECM reverse mortgage in their planning software. Now, not everyone. We all know there's a lot of different LOSs just like that in the financial world. There's a lot of different software. 
that they all tend to use a few big ones, and we have gotten the reverse mortgage put into that. In addition, guess what? It's a requirement of continuing license. It's continuing ed. It's in their regular process of getting their um, different designations and their licenses. This thing has gained credibility like crazy in the last year. And we've only just begun, I promise. All right. Let's talk about VE. Become the solution. I need about four pages of this because there's so many things, but I'm just going to run through a few of them that are the most common. Clients that are anticipating a loss of income in the future. What about somebody that just wants to go part-time? What about somebody that wants to retire? Any number of things. There's people that, I have my daughter-in-law, she's a nurse, and she's like so done with being a floor nurse. She'd love to go do something else, but it's a loss of income. If you've got someone that's in this age demographic, you can be that solution. Clients that are self-employed or lower income and don't qualify for the home they want. We have huge self-employed people in the boomers, huge. Most of us have owned and operated one or more businesses. I know I have. And there's a lot of that. So even though they're still working, you go to qualify them for a regular mortgage, and guess what? They don't qualify. Why are we self-employed so we don't have to pay too many taxes, right? It's kind of a uh, catch-22. Clients want to downsize, but they can't really afford a new home. Or if they only have $300,000 equity in their current home, that's not going to buy them something that they actually really want to live in. I know some of you in parts of the country, that's a mag, that's absolutely a mansion, but out here in California and San Diego, that's not. Clients that want to time the market. They want to buy low and they want to sell high. That's just prudent business. That's being wise. Clients that want to retire, but they want to wait for that maximum Social Security benefit. Real estate agents that need to expand their market. Just like you are hungry for volume, agents are hungry for volume. The old adage that 20% of the people do 80% of the volume is true in every single sales kind of business that there is. Real estate agents need ideas. They need help. Don't go to them and just ask for business. Go to them and teach them. Help them make money, and they will be tied to you forever. Clients that want to stay in their home. Clients that need estate planning strategies and long-term care. I don't know if you've shopped for long-term care insurance. It is extremely expensive. And the line of credit that can grow will absolutely allow people to tap for that for long-term care or if they do have that policy, that typically doesn't pay for in-home care. So you solve their solution either way. All right, buy low, sell high. This was a lovely, lovely woman, and she was sent to me by a real estate, off, a real estate agent. She had this gorgeous home in Del Mar that's another beautiful coastal area in San Diego, very high in area, and it was a big house, 3,400 square feet. She was really, really house rich and uh, cash flow poor because she paid a pool guy, she paid cleaners, she paid gardeners. I mean, it was crazy. She loved her home, but she knew that sooner or later in the next few years she needed to get out of it. She needed to get into a single level and something that was more manageable for her. However, she was very smart. Her concern was her house had just dropped like almost two million bucks, a million and a half to two million dollars in value. And those of you that went through this, I don't think there was anywhere in the country that we didn't crash in our real estate prices. But boy, in California, because we were so high, we crashed. We went down 50, 60, 70 percent. So this gal, her property had dropped almost two million dollars, and she just absolutely refused to sell it and leave that money on the table. And I don't, I don't blame her. But she also was very smart. There was an area in San Diego called La Jolla Colony. She wanted to buy there, and it was fabulous because normally you'd be paying six, seven, eight, nine, and upwards in La Jolla Colony area. Now she could get something for high twos, low threes, unheard of, but she didn't have the money. She didn't want to sell now so that she could do it, but she definitely wanted to buy now. So obviously the real estate agent sent her to me. I put her into a reverse mortgage. She used the cash from the reverse mortgage, paid cash for the La Jolla Colony property. She was going to stay in hers for a couple of years while she could. That is, it's an owner-occupied loan, guys. Don't forget that. No second homes. Stayed in there. And what she did is she had a very good friend. She had that good friend rent that new property for, from her. She used the rent to cover the taxes, the insurance, the HOA. And the remainder of that rent, I counseled her, put that against your reverse mortgage. And she did. 
So she paid it down onto reverse mortgage. So basically, she never accrued any interest, any mortgage insurance premium. She kind of kept it where it was. She actually paid down the principal a little bit so that when she finally sold her place and was ready to move into La Jolla Colony, she not only had gained back that $2 million, but that loan had just been frozen where it was. It was an absolute amazing tool. And you say, well, agents aren't going to want to wait. They aren't going to want to delay for the listing. I don't know. Call me crazy, but would you rather list a property for $1.5 million or $3.5 million? and wait a couple of years to do so. And in the meantime, she had the sale on the other side, so it really was a perfect win-win. How about the benefits for you and your borrowers? I'm telling you, if you don't get it, 77,000 people a week, 11,000 people a day, this is a huge source of new business in an untapped market. The LIBOR adjustable loans are not under the scrutiny of CFPB. So for nothing else, that should make you want to get excited and get involved right there. And because of that, you have a lot of latitude in what you're doing. Because you can take education, you can reach out your hand and say, if you heard about the new reverse mortgage, you can create strong business partnerships. The strongest partnership in the world starts with you increasing their business. Then they, in turn, are going to make sure that they're taking care of you. I'm telling you, it's a win-win. You can downsize, for the borrowers, you can downsize without sacrificing the quality of life, which is fabulous. The flexibility for the borrower. They can change the loan as many times as they choose to. How many would like to pick up the phone, call your existing mortgage, and say, I don't think I'm going to pay this month. Matter of fact, I'm not going to pay for six months. I'll get back to you in six months. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we love to do that? Unfortunately, we don't get that choice. With a HECM, with a reverse mortgage, you do. You can change it up as much as you want. If you want line of credit, if you want to take a lump sum, if you want payments, if you want a combination, if you want to change it up, it doesn't matter. And remember, that unused pool of funds, whatever format they're in, it is growing every single month. Protect your future and don't outlive your money. You can plan your retirement and you can complete completely enjoy that time of your life instead of having to cut back. How horrible to work your whole life just to not be able to take a vacation. That's really bad. And people that are especially more elderly and they run out of money and all of a sudden they have to look to their children to take care of them. I, I For me, I, I, I can't think of anything more horrifying. That's a horrible way to do it. All right. Let's look at this and see what you think an agent will like. Now, again, this is California, guys, so <laughs> if these dollar figures are way higher than you're used to in your part of the country, just ratchet it down. But out here in California, a $250,000 home, and down in San Diego, we can't even get them anymore, for $250,000 to be purchased in cash. Or they can use a HECM for purchase loan and have a $500,000 home. I don't know. Which one do you think your agent wants to sell? Which one do you think your client wants to live in? It's a fabulous way for them to not have to diminish their lifestyle. This is my favorite. Again, if you're multitasking, stop multitasking for a moment. This is the best. People don't think of this. I had a guy, he'd been my client for years. I used to teach, teach uh, real estate investing seminars. And I had helped this guy. He had 10 rental properties. He actually had nine rental properties and his primary residence, all with loans on them. His primary didn't have a very big loan, but didn't have a loan on it. So he was out of lending. He was out of regular conventional loans. We all know that Fannie Freddie, they cut you off at 10. Well, back in the day, of course, when you put a mirror under your nose, you could still get loans. But after the crash, boy, we got real bread and butter. And this guy wanted to have, he opened an LLC, or he started an LLC, and he wanted to become a flipper. So he contacted me. He said, there's got to be some money that you can get from me because I want to acquire properties, rehab them, and flip them. Well, you all know, in this last eight years, the answer to that was no, have hard money. <laughs> and so he started using hard money. He was literally, oh my goodness, he was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on hard money loans. Anywhere from 3 to 10 points, 10 to 12 percent interest, prepayment penalties, it was horrific. And he, three times a year, would call me and say, is there anything new, is there anything new, is there anything new? Finally, when he called me, he had turned 62. So I brought him in there and I said, look, here's what we need to do. 
will take out. He had less than 50 grand on his house. Well, he was he was young. He was just 62. So we took out the 50,000. He had a 320 thousand dollar line of credit left. And I told him, you take the line of credit, you acquire the property, you rehab it, you resell it, and you roll the money back over and you restore the line of credit. He wasn't going to be doing 1031 exchanges. He was just going to be churning this money. And that's what he started doing over and over and over again. Literally, this instrument has saved this guy. You say, why is the heck I'm good for a real estate investor? That's why. You've got a resource that you can use over and over and over again. Well, you might be sitting there saying, well, yeah, you could get a regular equity line of credit. Yeah, guess what? There's a 10-year draw period on a regular equity line of credit. Number two, what it takes to qualify, this would have been a $370,000 line of credit. Do you know what it takes to qualify? <laughs> I know we haven't had a lot of them around lately, but you have to qualify for the full amount, fully amortized, fully indexed. And it's not easy to do, so this was perfect for him. He didn't have to make payments. He didn't sweat it. If a house didn't sell right away, it absolutely became a breeze. For me, what did I get out of it? I get a fabulous bottle of wine every single Christmas, and I love it. <laughs> All right, create a system for success. You guys, find a good lender to partner with on Heckam. Find a good lender. Don't get stuck in the trap of always just shopping for who's going to pay me the most. Find a lender to partner with you. Many, many lenders have a step-by-step -step system you can plug into very easily. There's a lot of good lenders. They'll teach you how to get and keep clients. They should work with anybody on your staff to help them learn if they choose to do so. If you just want to find deals, let your lender do it all for you. Now, there's not many that will do that. That's, what we, that's how we roll. <laughs> My best saying is we can work for you or with you. And when I mean for you, I mean for you. You just hired a whole back office to get your loan done for you. You'll spend less than half the time on these deals as you do on your regular business. And you'll be able to go get out another one, another one, another one, and you'll learn along the way. All right, let's test your knowledge again, Beverly. All right, we've got our last poll question. The HACM is gaining popularity in the U.S. What is the penetration, penetration of the eligible population? You can answer on your screen. I will share with you in a few seconds the results. Okay, I'm going to close it up and share the results with you now. So 26% of you said nearly 12%, 50% of you said less than 1%, 12% of you said less than 25%, and 13% of you said just over 10%. Great job, you guys. It's less than 1%. Those are the ones that aren't multitasking, man. You've learned it. You've learned it. This is an amazing marketplace. Less than 1% penetration. Let that kind of roll around in your head for a minute. What an untapped market is out there. You are on the threshold. And I don't care how shy you are, we will help you. We'll help you do that. Reach your hand out and say, have you heard of the new reverse mortgage? Join those networks and associations. Create multiple business partners. I know there's a bunch of you that said, I've never created a business partner in my life. Seriously, it is not as difficult as you think. By asking that one simple question, you're going to open it up. You're going to open it up. Boomers right now, they're becoming the sandwich generation. And if you don't know what that means, I'll tell you what that means because I'm in this demographic, although the good news is um, <laughs> my kids don't need me. Thank goodness. Anyway, with the sandwich generation, it means that you've got somebody in their typically 50s and 60s. Their kids still depend on them financially, and their aging parents depend on them financially. Heaven help us, you're stuck in the middle. Give them the answer. If they're not 62, maybe their parents own a home. Maybe you could work something out with that. This is an answer. Solve a problem, have a client for life. I'm telling you, my clients used to call me and ask who's a good babysitter and who's a good gardener because once you earn their trust, they will come to you with everything. Move with the market, guys. 
don't stagnate. Do not stagnate. If you continue to say, well, I've never done this, or I don't do it that way, you're going to get stuck. The market's going to pass you by and the wave's going to cover you up and drown you. You need to strategize. How do you strategize? All right, you cash in on this. Let's talk money. All right. <laughs> Currently, the LIBOR HECM is not subject to Reg Z or the compensation rules. So what that means is whatever it is, it is. The flexibility, this is a very, very profitable loan. But here's what I want you to get from me. I don't want you to go away and say, wow, Colleen told us we could make a ton of money. What I'm telling you is you can really help your client and still get paid incredibly well, far better than you get paid on your regular loans. You can pay some or all of the closing costs. You can pay all the IMIP, none of the MIP, half of the IMP, all the closing costs. You can pay whatever you want to for this client. You, the originator, you can be the hero. You can be the one that blows everybody else out of a deal. People aren't going to beat you. The HECM is the most flexible product in the financial marketplace today. It's kind of like the old days when they used to let us do stuff. I know it sounds cliche, but this honestly is a win-win product. Actually, win-win-win. Super easy process, okay? Getting involved is very, very easy. It'll take very little time or resources from you. For us, our company, Land Home Financial Services, we will literally with, work with you or for you. And when I say for you, I'm not kidding. We provide you with marketing and processing and paperwork, all of the nitty gritty stuff. We're going to give you advice for you and your clients. This is not advice about, oh my goodness, what is this calculation? This is advice, how do you structure this so your client wins, your business partner wins, and you win. We're going to give you educational resources, and guess what? We're direct lenders. There's no lender overlays. So we actually are a lender. <laughs> so guys, ah, take advantage of this. This is a fabulous opportunity. If you've been the low end on the, on the origination scale and you've never been able to really get very far, let us help you. We can get you. We can help you grow your business in half the time. So want to be retired and loving it? You know, retirement's not a function of age, by the way. Retirement's a function of money. <laughs> you make enough money, you can retire now. All right, we're going to take some time for questions. There's some contact information up here. If you want to find out how to partner with Land Home, we'd love to have you. So while this is up on the screen, I am going to take some questions. Beverly? We have a ton of questions coming in. <laughs> so we're definitely not going to get to all of them, but I will try to get to as many as possible in the next few minutes. Um, all right. So our first question, does the under 62 person, if they're, you know, another person in the house, does that have to be a married spouse or can it be anyone on the deed at the time of the loan, for instance, an adult child 18 years old? It cannot be anybody but some form of spouse. By spouse, I mean spouse, domestic partner, common law. The only person that can be on the actual deed is the borrower. And to be a non-borrowing spouse, you have to be, that we do recognize common law and all the rest of it, but it cannot be the heirs. And it's important that the heirs understand something. The heirs, remember the scenario I talked about where the house is upside down and the heirs get to get it for 95%? It's imp important for them to understand, don't after you get your parents in a heck of throw them onto title, because you can't buy a house from yourself. So we've had heirs lose out in the last few years or so since this has been in play because they thought they were being smart and going on title. Don't go on title. When the house is gone, you get it. Make sure it's in a trust or it's in a will. You get it, but you can retain it at that 95% of the current value in the event that it's upside down. So the only one is either a legal spouse, a uh, common law, or a domestic partnership. Okay, great. Okay, the next question. Um, what if someone has a spouse that they're still married to, but they're not living together any longer? Is that uh, okay for a HECM? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. The new, with the new guidance that they came out, this was really wonderful. They have two kinds of non-borrowing spouses. They have eligible and ineligible. That would be an ineligible non-borrowing spouse. They would not have any rights after the borrower passes away. They do have to get counseled. There's HECM counseling that's required, and there's a couple of documents they have to sign, but that's it. 
you can do it. And we've had people that have been separated for 20 years, and the spouses say, yeah, fine, I'll sign that. I don't care. It's usually um, pretty easy to get that done. But that's a new event. It used to be if they weren't eligible, we couldn't do it. Well, now we can. Great. OK. The next question. I have so many. I'm just trying to search through them. Um, can a borrower refinance out of a reverse into a regular loan? Absolutely. It's just a function of LTV and with the way we have regular loans right now. VA is my second most popular loan. <laughs> you absolutely can. Yeah, it's like any other loan. You just send a demand in, whatever the payoff is, it is. You can refinance from a reverse into a reverse, and you can refinance from a reverse into any other mortgage product. OK. Um, can you pay off debt to qualify for a reverse mortgage? Um, you're not going to have to. You're not going to have to. It's kind of a yes and no situation. They don't allow you to necessarily pay off debt to qualify. But this is not a qualify with DTI. Remember that. It's dollar to dollar coverage. And even if they don't meet the income standards, if there's extenuating circumstances, that's why I said this is kind of a common sense deal. We can look at it and say, oh, yeah, their kids are giving them $100 a month or whatever. We can usually get them through. But the what we do in the forward world of paying off debt to qualify, that's not factored into the HECM. OK, great. Uh, is there any benefit in refinancing an old reverse mortgage into the new reverse mortgage? Um, if it's a benefit, yes. Typically what it is is the value of the property has gone up substantially. Now, let me qualify that. For those of us that live in the high-end areas of the United States, 625,500 is the max that the principal limit or, quote, the LTV will be calculated on. So if you had someone that did it, eh, you know, seven years ago, it was not 625.5. There may be a huge amount of benefit for them. There are some guidances that have been put into place by NORMLA and by FHA that show if we take the numbers, and it's a pretty simple thing to do, you just send the old mortgage statement and we calculate. And if there's a true benefit to the borrower, then absolutely they can do so. If there's not, then we'll have to turn them down. Okay. We have time for one more question, and then we're going to close it up. Um, if you have questions that I don't get to, I'm going to be sending them all over to Land Home, so someone will get back to you in the next few days to answer your questions. I'm also getting a lot of people asking. We are definitely sending out the PowerPoint presentation and a recording of today's webinar tomorrow to everyone who registered. So if you know someone, even if they missed the webinar but they did register, they will get it as well, and you'll be able to watch it and share it with them. OK, our last question. Can FHA or the lender ever foreclose on a reverse mortgage? Yes, they can. The only way they can is if the taxes and insurance go into such default, there's no way back. They will do everything in their power, and that's part of financial assessment. Um, it's not really as much as we're going to deny a loan, but if a borrower have shown that they don't really have a willingness to pay their bills, <laughs> they don't pay their credit cards, they don't pay their taxes or insurance, and they're short on cash, but there's enough equity in the home that we can put a heck of on there, take out their existing mortgage, which is going to help them tremendously, and then we use the remaining proceeds. We don't, we set it aside for what you guys call impounds. It's called a life expectancy set aside. If we do that, then they're going to be fine. But in the event that they do not have enough money to do that, that's what financial assessment's all about, is to prevent people from losing their homes because they don't pay their taxes and insurance. So I absolutely anticipate that it will be a very, very rare exception moving forward. It has been. We've had about 9% of the HECMs that have gone into tax and insurance default. They haven't been in foreclosure. I mean, they haven't gotten foreclosed on, but they've We've been able to help them out of that. But I think that's going to be just completely diminished because of financial assessment. But it is possible. To say it's not possible would be inaccurate. OK, excellent. I want to thank you so much. You, you have gave us so much great information. I have to say you were a fantastic presenter. I, was, oh, uh, I, was, I really, really enjoyed this webinar. And I, I'm getting great feedback from all of our audience members as well. So I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope you got a lot of information. And I hope everyone has a great day, and we'll see you on the next webinar.
Thanks, guys.